60 minute session for a client. This is a follow up session. So if you're interested in checking out any of the previous sessions, I'll put links in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and read these goals here. There's two main ones. I did want to mention in case this comes up in the session. So in the previous session, we were exploring um, a really meaningful connection with what could be a guide, a soulmate, a really awesome being. All right. So this really awesome being, his name is Tama, Ra Tama Ratha. And I want to make sure I say that before I get involved in the session, just in case Tamaratha might show up and have any additional messages to share. Um, so I wanted to say that. Now I'm going to go ahead and read these goals here. All right, number one. I'd really like to know why I'm not able to consciously travel into spiritual realms and dimensions, to consciously talk with my guides or angels, or to review something in the Akashic Records. I've tried so many techniques, including meditation, for years, but when I close my eyes in meditation and still my mind and sit in presence, I'm just sitting in dark stillness. That's it. No messages, no color, no images, no traveling, nothing. There may be something happening, but it's definitely not on a conscious level. Is there a barrier or a ceiling that prevents, that prevents me? Is my frequency just not high enough? Am I just not evolved enough? Is it just not part of my life plan for this incarnation? There has to be an answer. I've been working on this and wanting this for over 30 years. What specifically do I personally need to do to achieve my dream? Okay, this is a, just a fantastic goal. I have so many thoughts just going crazy in my head right now, but I'm just, I'm going to let that be what it is. And we're going to explore it here in the session. Okay, now the number the number two here for goals is, for the past month or more, I've had a lot of pain and tenderness in my throat on the right hand side in front. Not a sore throat. I was sent for an ultrasound and I learned the results on Monday. Okay, but could you take a look in there and see what is causing this mysterious ailment? I have read that all disease that manifests in the physical realm is caused by us in the etheric body first. If that is the case, there must be something I'm holding on to that needs to be released. Okay. I'm loving these goals. Super solid. Okay. I'm just going to pause for a moment here and get tuned in. Right now I'm experiencing stillness and it's amazing because I could feel it in my heart. It's a bit heavy, but I'm okay with that. And I see you and you're sitting in meditation. You're reflecting the color white and then everything around you is dark. It's black. So there's a lot of messages happening right now. One is, you could say, I'm experiencing myself as Tamaratha and wanting you to stand. Wanting you to... It's almost like you already carry all the skills that you need within yourself. And there aren't any more books you need to read. It's just awakening to some techniques. Everything is still, everything is black. I'm kind of like a bouncy person. I'm starting to see you, Tamaratha, and then I see myself and I, I'm made out of like a, I'm like a bunny rabbit with springs for my feet. And I'm just jumping up and down, up and down, and I'm getting higher and higher and higher and I'm giggling. 
and I'm asking you to get some springs on your feet and come with me and let's bounce around the universe. And you're a bit confused by this because meditation, to be able to be free and psychically interact with the spirit realm, you have to be still, but you don't. <laughs> In fact, you should be active. That's what I call active meditation. Because when you're still, you're connecting to the silent realms. But when you're actively involved in your meditation experience, which is actively involved in your inner universe, you're active and you can be playful there too. And sometimes you need to be playful in order to get your emotions going, in order to get your fears going, in order for you to um, get energy moving around you to help you see more about yourself. You are going to try to be bouncy. <laughs> and I see Tamaratha is <laughs> like bowing and then and walking backward at the same time. Like I like doing this and then kind of going to the this the background <laughs> and like uh, hiding behind the scenes or something. And I'm welcoming you to have fun and to feel like a child jumping on the bed. Now we can have some pillows too and have a pillow fight. It could be a lot of fun. You're holding yourself back. And the reason why is because you don't understand the difference between interacting in the energy world versus interacting in the human world. Because there's limits, it's going to feel like there's limits in the human world. There's no limits in an energy world. And you're free in an energy world. You can do whatever you want. And it's going to feel like you're making up your psychic experience. But where does the psychic experience come from? Your logical mind or your creative mind? That's why kids and education and really encouraging the logical mind is taking kids away from their developing their psychic gifts. But we all have this innately. We're all born with this. We're all born with psychic gifts. That's why we're creative from the get-go. And it's our creative senses that help us to understand our emotions, help us understand our feelings, help us understand each other. And it's what it's like the perfect pathway to give us access to an infinite universe and an infinite universe is not necessarily logical it can be but it's also extremely creative it's literally everything but how do you know the difference between making it up or just allowing it to happen you can do both you can absolutely do both So right now we're going to just have some fun. I felt inspired to grow some springs on my feet and jump around and be a bunny rabbit. And I ask, ask you to join me. And so I'm creating the experience for us. But I'm also learning about your relationship with being free. With being energetically free to express yourself. Express yourself in the energy world. But this is also reflecting back to how free you feel expressing yourself as a human being. So this isn't just my imagination. This is 100% tune into your energy and your energetic reactions to me and doing different things to help you understand how to open your psychic gifts that are already there, but also understand more about yourself as a human being too. Okay, this is really, really good. You're very tired. You have the skill to bounce with me, just so you know. But the reason why you're not able to is because we need to look at something that's holding you back, okay? It's a really heavy and it's like a black smear that goes literally from slightly above your head all the way down your face, all the way down your neck, all the way down your chest, all the way down you. It's just like a black smear that goes all the way down your lineup of chakras. Just goes straight down you. And it's very heavy, particularly in, in the upper and lower gut, okay? And the heart. And it, it just, it's just very heavy energy. I just feel like I'm becoming a pile of heavy energy. And this feeling that I'm not free. I can't just be free. Nobody is just simply free. I'm helping to transmute this for you. 
Because some people who think they're free, they think they could just do whatever they want to you. <sighs> We're exploring the concept of freedom. Being free to express yourself. All the different ways a human can be free to express themselves in really positive ways or really negative ways. And even encourage or manipulate you into feeling controlled and not free. Because they want to feel that much more free in a way. They're testing everybody. They're testing everybody around them to see how far they can go with their own freedoms. I mean, we're all exploring reality in our own unique ways, you know? Yeah, this is super heavy-duty stuff. I mean, it's heavy in your mind. It's it, it's really an interesting concept for you. This The word freedom. Freedom of self-expression by yourself and by others who have freely expressed themselves to you in different ways and how that has affected you in your life. You have just major energy buildup. Um, particularly, it's actually kind of pushing out of your face. It's just sort of on your face. <laughs> it's like somebody threw a black pie and it's just like here. And there's also kind of remnants of this black and it's starting to raise up um, across, like down your torso, like your chest and everything. Very heavy. I'm encouraging you to not hold back. Being, being able to feel yourself, feel your emotions is part of a psychic experience, believe it or not. We're going to say, well, that's completely human. My emotions are a human thing. But when you are connected emotionally to yourself, you're going to start feeling out your chakras in your etheric body. So is that completely a human thing? Or is that the connection between human and spirit that we're all starving for? So you're going to have to start feeling stuff, you know? And don't judge yourself. So if you feel really, really angry to a really wrong degree in your emotions, you need to just let that happen. You need to just stay with that aspect of yourself and see if you can pinpoint where that emotion exists in your etheric body. So let's say, why don't you pick out a picture of a memory, okay? Just one memory in your life that really hurt your feelings. And just, just a picture, a still image, just let it exist here in your third eye. And look at it from inside yourself as though you're looking at a projector in your third eye. And you just see the image and wait. Do you start to notice, um, you know, feelings of, of crying? Um, I'm not good enough. Why did they do that to me? Um, could be a, a sexual pleasure. Could be um, I'm, I feel like I'm thirsting and I'm dying in a desert. It could be anything, okay? So just let yourself stay with it and feel that part of yourself cry. Feel that part of yourself rage. Feel that part of yourself dying in the desert. Just be present with all the yous that you are. This is magic. This is mystical stuff here we're talking about. Because oftentimes as human, we don't go the extra mile to actually get to know our inner selves. And this, this is the next step for you. This is what raises the bar, you know? It's giving you more access to yourself, which gives you more access to the infinite universe. Because you are an infinite universe. You got to start working with limitless experiences, not limited. So freedom of self-expression is limitless, right? Wow, we're really holding it in here, okay? A lot of jam going on in the heart and around the face, emotional gut. Like we're talking upper and lower gut stuff and it's a bit jammed in the the throat um it kind of feels odd in my ears we're just letting the feelings exist we're just letting them all exist okay you're both excited and working on what we're processing right now this is like the 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 step you needed. This is like uh, the answer you're looking for kind of thing. Just guidance into how to take your psychic experience further. We need to explore this word freedom for you because to truly set you free, 
to truly um, get rid of the ceiling that you're bumping into is we need to explore all the different ways your soul has explored the energetic expression of freedom, lack of freedom, all right? The idea that you don't have the room to and somebody else is controlling or manipulating you could be any of these types of things. It's like the difficult side of freedom. I want freedom. I don't feel like I have freedom, but yet you always have freedom, always. Okay. Oh, this is also really jammed in your throat. I haven't taken a look at what you're talking about with your throat, throat just yet, but... <sighs> That's some really good release. Okay. So, the image of a wounded animal is coming to me and slowly dying, being shot with an arrow. And slowly, it's shot into your lungs so you're not able to catch your breath and you're getting weak, fall to the ground, and you're literally dying on your side. You're a deer. And I experience what it's like to be a deer that is taking its last breath. And it, it's almost the mind is going blank now. And it's, it's very confusing. And there is a, a within, it's just a split second of, sa of what feels like human sadness. And then freedom and letting go. And it's easy, it seems like as a deer, it's very easy to just move on. You, you're not hanging back and saying, why is this happening to me like a human? It's like when humans die, our souls are still exploring, thinking like a human, and behaving like a human, even in the spirit realm. So sometimes we can get stuck in, in eternity, which is like a purgatory, of trying to make sense of our life. <laughs> trying to make sense of things. Trying to make sense of ourselves. When the deer doesn't do that, it can just, it, it goes through the death process and then it just moves on. For some reason, that gives you more room to breathe as a human. You feel a, better. You feel like you have more room to breathe. You want to get to know more aspects of yourself. And you're not afraid of understanding ways that you have died in other lives. All right, there's a huge something, you could call it an energy block here, at the third eye in the inner mind and a little bit with the crown chakra. And it also has to do with believing that you can access the Akashic Records. It's something like this, um, that your abilities can give you access to other lifetimes that fast. Now, some, some souls are just adept at doing this. I will access past lives if I'm meant to, and I won't access past lives. I'm always accessing exactly what I need to access in exactly the right language in order to express what I'm accessing because that is my my role and I love I love it like this. So if I'm meant to be doing it differently, I will continue to grow and, and mold and ship shape shape shift and stuff into something more than I am right now, right? But I'm okay with me. I'm okay with my gifts as they are. I'm open to expanding them, learning more, growing more. Um, but I'm not judging myself for what I can or cannot do. I'm open to accessing more past lives if I'm meant to access more past lives. But for me, it's not like, my my skill set is really with the psychology of your emotions, the psychology of your relationship with your inner selves, relationships with other spirits, other beings in the universe, the psychology of other beings in the universe. That's like my go-to thing, you know? So you may have gifts that you don't know yet about, and so the go-to is always Akashic Records, angels, spirit guides, maybe energy healing, right? But what about the stuff you don't know about yourself yet? 
because you've shared some really cool things about your creative senses and those could be psychic gifts as well, you know? Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and move this because it's like a big boulder that's kind of jamming up your... And it's all about beliefs and what you can and can't do. Based on what you're able to do right now then determines what... It's like, well, there must be something wrong with me because I'm not doing it. I've read all the books. Nothing's working. So now you're creating an idea and energy here. And so how do you overcome yourself? How do you do that? But I want to just keep looking at this here, okay? Okay. All right. They're talking about um, a healthy way that you could you could work with in order to access other lifetimes. And it's coming back with feeling. It's coming back to having feelings. And I'm shown an image of you painting, okay? And it's a really massive canvas, like... It's like the ultimate giant canvas. I wouldn't even know where to begin. I wouldn't even know what to do. I'm like, oh my god, the rest of my life is this white canvas. I, I'll never get it done. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just going to throw the paint on it now and be done with it. <laughs> That's what my reaction is. However, you um, have one small brush and you're painting with like a burnt, um, it's like a red orange color, but it's more brown. Um, and you're just getting started. You're just moving the brush on the canvas right now. You're creating change. You're creating mood. You're expressing yourself. And now we're going to pause this moment. And now we're going to take the experience of painting. And we're not going to worry how big the canvas is. We're not going to worry about time. We're not. We're just going to take this experience. It's a. It's a feeling. It's not just an image. It's also a feeling of self-expression. But we're going to take that information, which can be the image as well, as well as the feelings. We're going to place it here in your third eye, okay? And just look at it from inside yourself. Just close your eyes, look at it from inside yourself. And, uh, and wrap yourself up in the way this feels, okay? You may be surprised by some of the feelings that come out of this. You may just start to cry and, and, and you might feel again um, imprisonment and a desperate desperation for self-expression. Like the freedom to paint is encouraging you to find other freedoms of self-expression like your emotions crying. And you're going to open up other scenes, other images. And they may not be particularly clear, but they're going to be something you're going to feel an awareness of a moment when. And it's okay. I suddenly feel like I'm a little girl just crying in my room. Okay, then be that girl. I feel like the room is a lot colder than... I anticipated, I feel chilly, like I need another blanket. But I find a way to warm myself by accepting the coldness of the room and the blankets that I have. And I have a stuffed animal that I'm holding close to myself. And I'm finding that love is something that warms me. And I feel a presence of immaculate love inside of me that helps me to feel safe. I dry the tears from my cheeks and I don't feel sad anymore. And I feel okay with myself. I feel okay with my life. I feel something angelic inside of me, an angelic light. So then you stay with that angelic light, okay? Allow yourself to be guided by that feeling. And all of this stuff is reflections of other times when 
you were present in many different experiences, many, 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 many different experiences. So you could say there's a lifetime where you lived in a poor family, but you found a way to be strong and even a way to overcome feeling cold by by finding a freedom to experience love inside yourself. I mean, it's a powerful statement. It's powerful willpower. It's love. It's innocence. It's acceptance. It's patience. It's like we're not here to just see life. We're here to participate in it. And so the feelings that come to you are coming from other lifetimes. Did they look exactly like this? Maybe not, but they felt similar to this. They felt like this. This is going to help you bypass jams in what you feel like you could access in your mind. Is going to give you the access to it in your heart and your feelings. So let's go on this journey together and let's follow this through to this angelic energy. Because this is real. As I'm teaching you the skills that you need to access your psychic gifts, which you have. I'm also healing aspects of you, introducing you to how you can access the Akashic Records, introducing you to aspects of yourself. This whole concept, this, this primary word, freedom, it's a key word in your energy field. And we're going to find ways to move these mountains so you do feel free. Not bound to being human, but part of being human. And part of being spirit and part of being part of everything in all times and all places, right? This is really good. Oh. Because you're feeling a innocence and purity and a warmth inside yourself, a love of yourself, a beauty that you it's a, it's like a richness and a beauty from within that you feel that you are beautiful and you are beautiful when i go to this angelic energy it's very peaceful very silent it's like um silent nature Silent nature can be kind of eerie, right? But this is not eerie at all. I feel very, very comfortable. It's like, how could there be no sound of insects, no sound of birds, no sound of animals of any kind, no sound of the wind, or, you know, there's no sound. But I experience serenity. It's a nighttime scene. The moon is full. The pond, I'm, I'm near a pond, is still. There's reeds and pond-like... Um, plants. I feel like there's pond sort of fish and frogs and mosquitoes and things like this. But I'm not bothered by any of that. I feel completely connected to the ground that I'm lying down on and the sky that I'm looking up into. This angelic's presence is silver in color. And I see it's pulling the energy from all of this nature into itself. Almost like its body is the pond and the animals and the insects and the wind and the moon and the stars and the stillness and the serenity and the ground. It's like the angel is all of, all of these details. And you bask in the light of the angel much like enjoying the light of the moon. The angel is very, very silent, very still. It makes sense that your meditations are silent and still and dark, okay? Because you're absorbing a lot, a lot of information. So you're going to want to have some meditations that are nothing happening, okay? I need meditations where I just clear my mind and I just lay down and I just don't choose to access any thoughts, any questions, any searching for, any activity. I just rest, basically. I just silence myself and just lay down and just receive. That's it. Whether receiving has a voice or an image or an anything, I don't worry. I just, I just receive. 
and that's all I do. That's that's meditation. That's really good meditation. But then there's also a meditation that I, I call active meditation, which like me, I'm closing my eyes, but I'm feeling a lot of things and I'm allowing my just creative senses to just open up so I can learn through my feelings. And then the images that come and I, I work with the images that come and the feelings that I get to help speak the meaning of what is being shared with me. What am I tapping into? Tapping into you, I'm tapping into my relationship with what's going on in your energy field, what your energy field means to me. I'm sharing these perspectives. Um, I'm stepping back and going beyond, allowing things to just reveal themselves. I'm interacting, right? But I'm sharing, sharing, sharing because there's just so much to access. So you can meditate in silence or you can meditate actively. Um, it's whatever feels right for you. And it feels like you're ready to start active meditation. And part of doing that is choosing to access creativity. Playing pretend is a great place to start. Playing pretend is a brilliant place to start. You can play pretend and just let a scene appear before you. And now suddenly you're an tri innocent child playing in the forest and you're bawling your eyes out. And you're wondering why. Well, you're just playing pretend, right? No, you're not just playing pretend. You're actually connecting deeply with yourself. And you're allowing that depth to come through your imagination, which is a safe place for you to access the spirit realm and your beautiful self and get to know you and what is beyond you. And to heal your emotions as well. But this angel is very much so reminds me of that type of meditation that is just all about receiving powerful energy and wisdom and awareness and you're ready. It's like you absorbed all this information and you've absorbed information and not just from reading and physical interactions with the human world, but by meditating. <laughs> you've been just soaking it all up more than you are consciously aware of. But you've soaked up what you need in order to go to the next step and you really are at the next step, okay? So I'm going to wait. I'm just going to continue to experience this angel, okay? It's This angel is more male right now, but I feel like it represents male and female depending on what um, what your needs are at the time. Right now he has a strong male presence and he is a silent presence. But there's something bold about his stance as though... Um, he feels like a protector, but he says nothing. He's very still. There's something elvish to his appearance as well. He has white white hair. It's long. He has um, pointy ears. He has beautiful, absolutely beautiful eyes. The structure of his face, he's very handsome. But he is very strong and very strong-willed. He's a protector energy. But he is very connected to all of nature. All of nature. He really likes this kind of nature. It's something about ponds or pond. Um, it's not like a vast lake or a river. Um, an ocean. There's something about the pond environment that he likes. He says it's because it's about transformation. The tadpole into the frog or the toad. Um, the butter, you know, The caterpillar into the butterfly. There's something about transformation, even um, the f the larvae they of the fly mosquito larvae, like the transformation of insects as well. And he loves the energy of water. Also, there's something about the depth of the moon's light. There's beautiful depths to the sunlight, but the vibrational meaning um, is different between the sun and the moon. And he likes the vibrational meaning of the moon's light. Um, moths, uh, the images of moths, moths uh, flying are also appearing here. There's something about the moon and the moon mother. I see just a woman who is pregnant in the moon. And she is deeply connected to her own body and her own unborn child. And there is a deep love of being a woman and being a creator. And it's uh, this deep inner inner world, this deep inner personal 
um, world. It's a vast, mysterious place for the human because so much of our identity is in this mysterious place, is hidden in here, inside. And But it can be beautiful as well, very beautiful. And he wants to remind you that there are beautiful emotions inside yourself and to be okay feeling beautiful. Explore that. So instead of just putting an image here in your third eye to look at and then allow whatever feelings to come, just come. If you need to cry, if you need to feel angry, if you need to scream, if you you know, need to just be in anguish, like you have to stay in the feeling for 30, 60 seconds. It literally doesn't take very long. But you can also take a feeling and start with the feeling inside. And he wants you to try this as someone who is creative as you are. You can try this to feel what it is like to be a mother, a moon mother, and an unborn child, and the that type of intimate love between the mother and the unborn baby. And to feel that in your heart, to feel that um, in your emotions, in your womb, to feel that inside yourself and stay present with the feeling. And there's something very beautifully artistic about it, but there's something very emotional and it may, it may actually release some pent up emotions um, that you need to just, you need to vent. But, it, but as you vent those pent up emotions, keep exploring the image again. After you've cried or after you've released, experience that feeling again in your heart and see how you feel differently about it. You may now start to notice you're feeling more beautiful about it, more in tune, more harmonious with it. This is you healing your etheric body. This is you tapping into more than just your human self. It's you healing your etheric bodies, your chakras, you healing your past and future lives. It's you healing, it's you aligning, it's, it's you going beyond. This is a really big one. The word baby is a word you should explore, a keyword. Feel that keyword in your heart. But he's, um, he's also showing me the word angel is another one that you should explore. And just feel, feel what angel feels like to you. Feel what angel feels like, not what angel you think angel is like, but feel what it feels like. You can even work with an image and put it in your third eye and then allow yourself to have emotional responses to it. And place angel in your heart. He keeps saying, place angel in your heart. Okay, hold on here. This is really moving things. Uh, Self-worth is another one we got to work on here. It's, um, it's tapping into what is a love that is so pure that it would never judge you, but you then would judge yourself, right? And you need to know what it is like to, to experience a love that does not judge you and to just let that love hold you. And you can cry in the judgments of yourself until all the judgments wash away. And now all that remains is something that is pure and harmonious and connected, which is what is, lies beyond you know, the bar or the ceiling that you have reached. Do you see now how you go beyond that? how you work with yourself in order to go beyond. Okay, a lot of unreconciled anger here, which is good. We got to it's like it's I can access it. That's the good thing. I'm all I'm going to do is just sit with your unreconciled anger. It's kind of hidden behind your heart a little bit. So 
So when I sit with it, it just starts to look like um, soldiers, but um, it's more like medieval. It's like knights and horses. It's having a purpose and a direction, being told what to do and where to go and to do that thing and then to return for the next purpose, the next direction. But to feel the development of new identity as you go through these many experiences and to decide what it means to be yourself. So it's like being a knight that feels young and valiant and uh, like I'm going to save the world kind of thing. Goes is called to go here, is called to go there, to go through these war experiences. It is starting to become full of these memories, these challenges of the mind and the emotions. Now how valiant do you feel? Now how young do you feel? Now do you feel like a savior of the world? Or do you feel burdened and confused? You see, this is life. This is what it is to be human. And you have every right to still feel young and valiant because it takes that type of energy and that type of passion to follow through with you, what you feel is the right thing to do. And you have to love yourself for every choice you've ever made. And if you feel ready to move on from that identity into a new identity, then you do that. Then that's perfectly fine to set the sword down and go live a peaceful life in the woods now. This is a unreconciled, it's a, it's a gross feeling. This time it's changing its meaning, okay? It's becoming a forced. I'm forced now to wear this uniform, forced to go in this direction with my life, to become a knight, to make something of myself. It doesn't feel like I am following my own heart, but the pressures of other people in my life, and I hate it. So you just experience that. Because now what is your relationship with freedom again? Because in the end, you're choosing to be the knight. And I started to see in this life, in this version of the, of the life, where you don't want to be the knight, you become it because there's so much push for you to do this, to go in this direction. You actually learn incredible skills and you have developed self-respect and even respect for those who made you do something you didn't want to do. You may not have agreed with everything that you experienced, but you had respect and reverence for yourself and for all the events that took place in your life, and you don't regret it. You actually never regretted it. But when you go in with... <laughs> feeling like you are the angel and the savior of everyone and you get broken and beaten down to a point that you wondered what you got yourself into You're starting to realize what you can and can't do to save the world you start to realize that you're just a person just a man so there's different uh, there are different discoveries in both versions of pretty much the exact same life and you've explored both versions. You really do not like war or killing. You don't like, you don't want, you don't want to participate in that type of environment. You just really don't want to. So I'm going to sit with that part of your soul, okay? The part of you that doesn't want, it just like, it's not for me. I don't want that. I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to be in war. I don't agree with it. Like, there's a lot of just... I don't choose that. So I'm going to have you sit with this. Because you have to come to peace with everything. Because God's at peace with it all. So why can't the human be? 
you can be at peace with it all because you're part of God. And when you're at peace with everything, that's when you're truly harmonious. You can be human and spirit and love life. And it's okay. Everything about your life is okay. You just say, I want the pain to go away. I want the hurt to go away. I don't want to hurt anyone and I don't want anybody to hurt me. I want the hurt to go away. And we return to the scene of the deer that is hit with the bow and the deer dies. Tragically, but yet peacefully. I have you sit with us still because you're still a bit aggressive and angry. Not necessarily about the deer, just the feeling that you have. You just call it senseless death now. Now we're going into the feeling of senseless death. We're going into the feeling of... It's like your interpretation of the type of minds that, that create these realities of senseless death. Ignorance, selfishness, greed. The hardest part about all of this is to remember you are a part of every single person. The people that make the selfish, ignorant, greedy choices. You are part of everybody. So if you can never like those parts of yourself, then the war will never end inside yourself and in the world. You're actually, this is really activating more of your creative senses and music like um, beautiful singing, like a maiden singing to herself by the water. And she's uh, got a magical energy to her, very connected to nature. And I see many spirits that are drawn to her voice and her song. And she's not afraid to just sing. And sometimes there's no words for what she sings. She just sings and she just sings from her heart. And she's expressing so much meaning and so much beauty. It's like all the forest and there's a pond, like a, it's, I mean, it seems cleaner like a lake or something, but it is small. And she is singing and so many just receive her beautiful song and they encourage her to receive her own beautiful song to receive how beautiful that she is inside herself and to others. I'm really giving you access to more of yourself, which again is, is igniting some creativity to take place self-expression in order to heal and this is your bridge this is getting you beyond the ceiling that you've reached so be sure to take time to reminisce in the beautiful feelings and time to reminisce in in the difficult ones that come up in both because sometimes when you go through the lineage of hard feelings you can reach a feeling of warmth starting to erupt in your heart. So stay with that feeling too. Because that's also part of the healing process. The self-awareness. <laughs> the healing of your etheric body chakras. The connection between your human self and the spirit realm. The opening of your psychic senses.
you feel like you're at, at a new beginning and you are ready for a new beginning. It's a bit heavy right now to talk through just in my stomach, lower gut. I just feel very grounded, but um, tire, tired, um, a, he a good heavy feeling. The energy is not in my head. It's actually kind of shoulders down. And it's going through the hips, down the legs as well. But it's it's very uh, nurturing for your root, for your sacral, for your solar plexus, for your heart. It's helping you to feel really grounded here on earth. And to feel the love of yourself and love of creation. For you to feel in awe of the beauty of it all. It's like you could be, we can go back to the nights, the story of the nights. And you can be in the midst of that difficult learning or you could be watching it from another life and saying, Wow, to think that I went through experiences like this, I love and value myself for learning these difficult lessons. So do you see it's not so disgraceful anymore, is it? It's actually quite beautiful. Let's see if I can find out what's going on with your throat, okay? <sighs> Tamaratha as well. I'm opening the door here in case there's any other messages. Oh, Tamaratha says, um, okay, let's take what you're experiencing in your throat and let's just sit with the feeling that exists there. Just that. Just sit like as though your throat has feelings, just sit in the feelings of your throat. And he says, sit with me in your throat. <laughs> so he's like, he's, <laughs> he's delightful. Okay. He shows me, it's like a teapot that's see-through. And you're like tea blooms. And uh, he's a tea bloom and you're a tea bloom. And you're sitting in your throat. And it's closed tea blooms right now. But the tea blooms are opening up and it's it's the love of each other, the love of friendship, the love of connection, it's support um, and it's you supporting yourself as well. So when Tamaratha is there, he's there to support you, but he's also a part of you. So he's like you supporting yourself. Do you see how cool that is? <laughs> that, like, just write that down, okay? Tamaratha is also like you, there to support yourself. So neat. And you're sitting in this hot water, uh, like it's, um, like a Hawaii, like a hot spring or something, but you're opening up as flowers and... It's encouraging your throat to feel the beauty of love and friendship and connection. Um, the beauty of nature. But not only that, allow yourself to feel what it feels like to be this vulnerability in your throat. If it feels disc like a discomfort, just sit in the discomfort, okay? Just feel the discomfort. Just stay with it. See if any images come to you. See if for some reason now my throat feels, or my stomach feels heavy, or my heart feels heavy. I keep seeing an image of a weird bag coming out my sacral chakra. You see, this is you healing yourself. This is full-blown psychic here. And Tamaratha says that He'll be there anytime, anytime to help you with anything. And he says that it, think of him as you being there for yourself anytime you need anything. Because you should always be there for yourself anytime you need anything. But he'll always be there for you anytime you need anything as well. 
It's just, he loves you so much, cares so much about you, cares about your well-being, your, your joy, your life. And as he says that, it's you saying, I care about my well-being, my joy, my life. And it interchanges between him saying it and you saying it. And there's something important about this message that is bringing a balance to your third eye and your crown. It's bringing meaning to literally all of your chakras all the way down. Root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. You feel like a, a flower that is open. You feel happy. You feel like your life is a lot more precious than you've ever given it credit for. And the value of all the souls in your life that have guided you to be the person that you are today. With the vulnerabilities that you carry today. And the joy of actually sitting with what it feels like to be human. To feel vulnerable, but to overcome the vulnerability to find the love beneath the surface of it all. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Boy, your energy field feels like it's buzzing and it feels beautiful. It sounds like cicadas in the summer. Like it sounds like buzzing insects happy and in the outdoors. Uh, another inspiration comes to me for you to try this simple exercise, okay? To just close your eyes and experience the sound of cicadas buzzing. The sound of a pond. And now be by the pond and touch the pond water. Discover a frog in the pond and hold the frog. Smell what the pond smells like. Is it a sticky hot day? Are you sweating? Do you have to sweat in the energy world? Do you have to actually breathe in the energy world? I will say if you choose to stand in a place of pure air, like fresh oxygen, and just experience yourself, pretend that you're standing in a place of fresh air and just pretend to breathe the fresh air in, from your imagination, I swear it will go inside your etheric body and it will it will purify your whole physical body. You can go visit a waterfall, you can drink fresh water, so you can pretend to have a glass of of water from, you know, the angels, okay? And they've poured this very special glass of angelic water for you. And now drink it, taste it. What is the temperature of it? Is it refreshing? Allow your body to receive it as a gift from angels to you. These are very simple exercises to help you discover that you don't have to be there to be there. You don't have to be by the pond to actually experience being by a pond. This is how you activate your psychic senses because your psychic senses work just like this. Do I hear cicadas right now? No. Abby the human does not hear cicadas. But in my head, I can. In my head, I can touch the water. In my head, I can touch the grass. I can feel the sweat. In my head, I can do these things. But it's not just in my head. It's in my heart. It's in my emotions. It's in my energy nose. It's in my, it's in my etheric senses. That I can be present in places like this. Now, after you've pretended to experience the pond, why don't you wait and see if you can sense somebody coming towards you to sit down with you. And now allow a body, a form of some kind, to sit down on the ground with you. And see if you can see what they look like to you. Even if you can't see what they look like, maybe a feeling will come to you. 
Or maybe nothing will come to you, but you just sense a form is here. And now hold the hand of this form. And now feel the love that this being has for you. And this is what you do inside yourself. And I talk out loud because if I don't, when I'm in these, I will fall asleep. I will lose track of it all. So I always encourage anybody who's exploring this act of meditation technique to not be afraid to talk out loud to themselves or to the voice recorder on their phone. And they say, okay, I'm, I hear the sound of cicadas. Just give it a little bit of time and pr just feel some stuff. Okay, I felt the, the pond feels like this. Um, there's butterflies or there's dragonflies or there, um, it's a sunny day or it's a night sky. Um, it's cooler than I anticipated. It's a really hot day. Like, um, just, just allow yourself to be present in an experience and then talk about the experience. Allow a, a persona to be there with you. This is how you start getting to know your guides. This is how you start getting to know yourself. Because every time you go into these spaces, it's not just the spirit realm. It's your inner universe as well. It's getting to know you as well. See, that's why when I do journeys for, for you, for clients, I not only get to experience your inner universe, I also get to learn more about myself, get to learn more about about the spirit realm and interdimensional beings. I get to learn. So we're learning together with each other, through each other. So every time, everything in life, even when I, when I turn this session off and I go back to my normal day, everything in my life is still teaching me about myself and about my reality. It's teaching me what it's like to be human and on and on and on and on and on. And we're all interconnected in this. We all are. We're all God walking around trying to figure out ourself. It's so weird, but it's true. I'm the part of God that's bar God's being this right now. <laughs> well, God's being you right now. Well, God's being all of us right now in all these different ways that God is exploring being, trying to discover God's own self through all of our different ways of being. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty interesting when you really think about it. <laughs> okay. This has been such a delight. I know this session is going to be so helpful for you, but I know the session is going to help a lot of people. A lot of people who are trying to raise the bar or get past the ceiling of their own psychic uh, development and opening, awakening of their own psychic senses. So thank you so much for the experience and thank you for sharing. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.